Natural resources are important to understanding both the history and future of Latin America. As Uruguayan writer Eduardo Galeano puts it in his renowned novel, Open Veins of Latin America, underdevelopment in Latin America is a consequence of development elsewhere, that we Latin Americans are poor because the ground we tread is rich, and that places privileged by nature have been cursed by history. Of all natural resources, fresh water is arguably the most valuable in the world. Shortages and contamination can lead to public health epidemics and even war. Fortunately, Colombia is well off when it comes to potable water. Although our journey ended here, the story of Colombia's water begins in the Paramos. It's wet, rainy, and provides water for nearly 10 million Colombians, mostly in Bogota. By following the water, we can learn how our own adventure mirrors its path. Hiking through the Paramos gave us first-hand experience in where the story of Colombia's water begins. Muddy paths, dense temperate jungle, and vast reservoirs are constant reminders that this place is the origin of Colombia's water. One of the most common questions on our trip was, is the water okay to drink? In many ways, this question reflects where our journey fits into the larger narrative about water in Colombia. In Quindío, the Cauca River helps irrigate important crops such as coffee, plantains, and avocados. The region is known for its lush farmlands and towering wax palms, which helped earn its name, Land of God in the indigenous Kimbaya language. The Cauca River runs parallel to the Magdalena River, which flows north through the Santander region. On its journey, it passes near Bucaramanga, a thriving city of just over one million people. Here, we spent a week learning about the differences in water access based upon socioeconomic class. For most of the city's inhabitants, tap water is potable and readily available. But as we discovered through a survey of the poorer northern region, the primary water source, the Rio Oro, is contaminated. Higher than expected pH and phosphorus levels led us to conclude that cleaning products are affecting the health of the river and the people that rely upon it. This reality is far from unique in Colombian history. Love in the Time of Cholera by Gabriel Garcia Marquez guided us on a literary journey, teaching us how poor water sanitation has affected Colombians' public health in the past. Roughly 500 kilometers to the north, the Magdalena River meets the Caribbean coast. We struggled to imagine the beautiful coastal city of Cartagena, as Marquez once described it. The epidemic of cholera morbus, whose first victims were struck down in the standing water of the market, had, in 11 weeks, been responsible for the greatest death toll in our history. Here, we were instructed to conserve water and explicitly directed not to drink from the tap. This is a stark contrast from the city of Marquez describes as it was ravaged by the cholera epidemic. Mass graves, stinking sewers, and rats abound. Nonetheless, water contamination is clearly still an issue. From the heights of the Andean Paramo through the coffee lands in Magdalena Valley, the water story culminates on the coast. As we look ahead to the future of Colombia's natural resources, we must consider how the impending effects of climate change will affect this story. Studies estimate that changes in annual rainfall and temperature could lead to species extinction and a drying up of the Paramo, a huge risk to Colombians' water supply. 
Unfortunately, the Colombian government is taking active measures to ensure that the story of water allows for a future that is as prosperous as the ground on which it flows.